I'm Arjun, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Science and Engineering Technology. So uh, in today's session, I'm uh, going to conduct uh, experimentation on uh, vibration testing. So uh, as a part of this experimentation, now I'm going to conduct uh, uh, undamped torsional vibration of a disk shaft system. So you can see the uh, disk is attached over here, and uh, this is the shaft, and uh, we have a rotating drum which is connected over here. So uh, initially we have to uh, adjust the graph sheet on this mm -hmm. and uh, this is a rotating drum which will rotate about uh, 6 rotations per rpm and we have to set a reference mark. So for, for that uh, we have the knob provided over here, if you turn on the knob mm -hmm. so we can see, so we can see uh, okay, a, a reference line is being marked. Yeah, conduction of this experiment is uh, quite simple. So uh, initially, so this is a, di a shaft system and uh, as I told this is a disc which is connected over here. So in order to uh, see the torsional vibration of a disc and a shaft system, you need to give an initial uh, twist to this. So here you can see you can uh, set to the maximum amplitude that you can uh, require and uh, here see we can we can observe here. So on the graph system, so you need to set it to maximum amplitude and once you turn on this rotating drum, okay, so now I am setting this to maximum amplitude and I will turn on the rotating drum and if we leave this, so we are going to get the amplitude of vibration of this particular disc and shaft. Now you can turn on this and uh, if you remove this particular graph sheet which is attached to this uh, rotating drum. And uh, you can see uh, the amplitudes of vibration which are got over is. Uh, here uh, the time required to complete one complete cycle uh, the distance for one complete cycle is noted down which will be then converted into time and since the reciprocal of time will give you the frequency so this will be compared these are the experimental results and this experimental results will be compared with the theoretical natural frequency to check the system yeah in order to continue with so these are the dimensions uh, uh, for this uh, uh, torsional vibration of a disk shaft system Diameter of the drum is 62 mm, speed of the drum is 6 rpm, length of the shaft is 81 cm, diameter of the disc is 190 mm, diameter of the shaft is 3 mm, length of the shaft is 92.5 uh, uh, cm. Okay, and uh, so now uh, to start with, uh, in order to find out the theoretical natural frequency, we will be using this formula Fn is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of gj by il uh, now rigidity modulus is 81 gpa okay uh, see uh, here uh, i'm sorry this is the length of the shaft 92.5 centimeter okay uh, so in order to find out rigidity, uh, rigidity modulus is 81 gpa for this particular material and weight of weight of the disc with the shaft is 33340 3, 3, 3, plus 430 grams okay uh, in order to find out theoretical natural frequency, again I is uh, mass moment of inertia, m r square by 2 or m into k square where k is r, r by 2 which is radius of the disc. So we have to consider uh, this diameter divided by 2 and j is pi d to the power of 4. Here we need to uh, make use of diameter of the shaft for this calculation. So we need to consider diameter of the shaft. So, uh, in order to find out the experimental natural frequency, you need to note down, as I told you, you need to note down the total distance uh, for one complete cycle. Either you can take any cycle from year to year or here to year. So, you can take any uh, distance. So, if we calculate that, so it is around 1.3 centimeters. So, x will be uh, 13 mm. So, we have 1.3, sorry, 14 mm, 1.4 centimeters. So value of x is 14 mm. So we substitute that value over here, and uh, we know diameter. So 10 into 14 mm. So 14 or 1.4 centimeters. So 1.4 into 10 power minus 2. 
divided by pi into diameter of the drum is uh, uh, rotating drum is 62 rpm so 62 into 10 power minus 3 uh, so yeah so we find out uh, t for this and then reciprocal of this will give you experimental natural frequency and now uh, by using this we find out theoretical natural frequency then we will be comparing uh, the theoretical natural frequency theoretical natural frequency with the experimental natural frequency thank you